This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Envato provides a huge library of creative assets such as graphic elements and templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, fonts, and much more. On top of that, it offers unlimited downloads with an affordable subscription. So if you're interested, I have provided a link down below in the description, which will take you to their website. And of course, if you do decide to register, I get to earn a commission. Hello everyone and welcome back to a new tutorial which is going to be a bit different compared to the usual step-by-step -step format. Instead, we're going to be breaking down an already finished project which is this atmospheric title scene. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that this project, along with all the other projects I plan on releasing in the future, are going to be provided for download on my Gumroad page. I already have a few assets available there which you can download for free since as of now all of them are using the pay what you want system, but you still have the option to support the channel if you'd like to. So if you don't want to miss out on those, then make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell next to it to be notified whenever new stuff comes out. Now on to the tutorial. So for this title design, I already had a concept in mind of a moody forest scene, but before I even hop onto After Effects, I started to gather some reference images from different sources and use this really cool and free program called PureRef, which has a lot of cool features for sorting all your reference material. As for the reference, I searched for atmospheric foggy forests across Google, Behance, Pinterest, and I came across this image, which is actually where I got the idea for the cracks on the title. I also remembered a game I used to play called Limbo, which has this really cool minimalistic design, and that inspired the mostly silhouette look of this title design. As you can see, you can find inspiration in pretty much all forms. I then went on to gather some assets like trees, branches and grass, which I would use to populate my forest. As I was searching, I stumbled upon this website, onlygfx.com, and found these conveniently prepared materials of bare trees and branches, which were exactly what I was looking for since I wanted some dead trees that look creepy. By the way, I say convenient because they were all in PNG format, so that meant that they were transparent and they roughly had the same size and the same clip art style. The style is really important because you don't want to have some assets in a cartoony style and then some other assets in a realistic style. Obviously it depends on the concept you're going for but usually they don't go well together so if you're going for a more unrealistic look then make sure that all of your assets match that style. There's a bunch more random textures available in there and if you read through the terms of use then you'll find that you have permission to use them in any of your projects. So huge shout out to OnlyGFX.com for providing us with free, free cool stuff. After I had my reference and assets ready, I then used Photoshop to create a basic layout of my scene, such as the landscape, which would serve as the main base for our composition. Figuring out the composition of your scene as early as possible is really important because you won't have to hassle around in After Effects trying to figure out the shape and placement of your objects. After I had the storyboard sketch ready, I then jumped into After Effects and started with a simple gradient background, then added a ground element which I created by using a solid and tracing around it with the pen tool. I also added a roughened edges effect to the ground layer to make it more bumpy and then finally colorized it. This was also the point where I needed to add some grass which would sit on top of the ground and as I mentioned before, I had found some grass materials which I was planning on using the puppet pin tool on to match the shape of the grass to the ground. But ultimately I figured it would be much more efficient to create the grass procedurally by using the CC hair effect which is a built-in plugin meant to generate hair particles but also works pretty well for grass in this case. So I duplicated the ground layer and added the CC hair effect. At first it kind of looked weird because the hair particles would generate across the entire shape and as a result it got very laggy due to the amount of particles. So a good solution I found was to add the stroke effect to it so we would only have a line sitting perfectly across the top of the ground mask and then have the hair particles generate based on that line. This way I could also control the amount of particles by adjusting the brush size together with the density value of the CC hair effect. Another cool feature the hair effect has is the hairfall map which allows us to simulate fake wind by using a wind map. So I created a new solid 
and use fractal noise to generate a random texture. I set the map layer to be that wind map and also had to make sure that the hair fall map was using effects and masks and the luminance channel so it would take into account the black and white values of the fractal noise effect. I then tweaked the brightness and contrast of the fractal noise and added a bit of evolution by using the time times expression. Finally, I parented the grass to the ground, turned them into 3D layers and started to duplicate them until I had about 5 layers shifted in Z space to give us some depth and also adjusted their colors to get more and more faded as they went further away from the camera to make it look as if fog was present in our forest. Ooh, creepy. I also randomized the mask shapes of the ground elements and made sure that those mask shapes were copied over to their respective grass elements so that the grass outline would match with the ground. Another important thing would be to make sure that the ordering of your layers on your timeline is set properly because sometimes layers tend to render on top of each other in unwanted ways even if they are 3D so it's always good practice to order layers to match their position in 3D space. And there you go, we have our landscape which we can animate our 3D camera to move through and have this parallax effect. Trees! I then imported my tree assets and started to populate the scene, placing them in different places such as in the background, mid-ground and even very close to the camera so as the camera is settling into the final position, we see these branches in the foreground that are out of focus due to the depth of field of our camera which give even more depth to the scene. I also found this image of many trees in one which was very convenient to position far into the background and lower their opacity so they seem like they are very far away. And just like with the grass, I wanted to add some wind to the trees as well so I used the turbulent displace effect with a low amount value and animated the evolution over time by using the time times expression. As for the colors, I just copied the same values from the respective ground layers that each tree was sitting on, but on top of that, darkened them down even more with a brightness and contrast effect. This way, the trees still have the same base color as the ground, but overall are a bit darker than the ground. At this point, I decided to focus on the title. I found this font called Night Zone, which has this creepy look, so it fit pretty well with the mood I was going for. It is also free and will be included in the project files, along with all the other materials used in this project. I made sure to pre-compose the title so that later on I can just go back to that title pre-comp, edit the text and it automatically updates in the main comp. To give the letters more character, I created a solid and traced some cuts along the title which as I said was inspired by this reference image. Then I used that solid as a mat to cut off the text. Of course this does mean that if you change the text then you do have to adjust those masks to fit with the new text or you could just get rid of the cuts if you want to. Then I added a gradient to it, a bit of bevel and made sure to keep everything in grayscale colors since the colorization will be taken care of in the main comp. Back in the main comp I duplicated the title and on this duplicated copy, I added the CC radial blur effect with a type set to fading zoom, added a curves effect to boost the alpha all the way up so we get this sharp extrusion, and then we could adjust the blur amount to determine the extrusion amount basically. I actually even animated the amount value so it would be more extruded as the camera was passing through the title to fake the illusion of an actual 3D extruded text, and then as the camera settles in, the amount goes down as well. It's little tricks like this that really help sell the fake 3D effect but you're often limited by how far you can push these tricks before the fakery breaks. I could have used something like Element 3D for example but I wanted to keep everything built in so anyone who uses this template doesn't need to worry about any third party stuff. Finally, I tweaked the contrast of the front side title, made the extrusion a lot darker and also added some bevel to it so it would reflect the next element in our scene which is the moon. One giant leap from one small leap. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Is it real? Was it all CG VFX? Anyway, I created a simple circle using a circle mask on a solid, turned it into a 3D layer, positioned it in the sky and added some glow to, you know, make it glow. The whole scene was looking fine up until this point but it felt kinda empty so I decided to add some fake fog which was actually the whole point of this atmospheric title in the first place was to add some sort of fog to it. I created a new solid, added the fractal noise effect, tweaked the settings to get this big texture, blurred it out a lot 
duplicated it a few times, randomized their position in Z-space so they would fill out the entire scene. I also used the transform effect and tweaked the opacity value to make the fog layers get less and less visible the closer each copy got to the camera, whereas the actual opacity of the layers themselves remains the same. I could have probably used an expression to fade the opacity of the fog layers based on the camera distance, but I didn't bother with that since we're not moving in large distances, Plus that would add an extra layer of complexity which I didn't feel was necessary in this case. I also used either the screen or add blending modes to blend them on top of the other elements. And as you can see, the fog added a lot more life to the scene. Speaking of life, to give it even more life, I added some particles by using the CC particle world effect, which again is also built into After Effects. And if you've ever used any particle system, then you'll probably understand how this works. It's just a bunch of sphere particles spread out in all axes with a bit of negative gravity. So they float upwards over time. Nothing too fancy. I also added some post-processing effects like colorization to the background and title separately. Some bloom, light rays, which I created by using the CC Rail Fast Blur effect on an adjustment layer with a high amount, the zoom mode set to brightest, and also set it to the light and blending mode with a low opacity, and this way we get these light rays across bright surfaces. I also linked the center value of the radial fast blur to the position of the moon, so that the ray's direction would match with the moon's position. The moon is a 3D layer, so I couldn't just pick whip the center value to the moon's position. So what I had to do is extract a 2D coordinate from the moon's position and then pick whip to that. By the way, I already covered how you can extract a 2D point from a 3D point in this tutorial. I also added a bit of vignette with a CC vignette effect some noise, and a luma fade at the beginning. A luma fade basically means the bright parts of your image fade in before the dark parts of your image. To achieve that, I used the levels effect together with a quick black solid fade out to have it fade in from complete darkness. As you can see, a luma fade looks a bit more interesting compared to a simple fade. At this point, I had crossed off my entire to-do list, but I thought, wouldn't it be cool to add some texture to the whole thing? And to answer myself, yes it would. So I started by going over to this website, polyhaven.com, which is another cool website that provides free high quality textures, HDRIs and 3D models assets. I found this mossy rock texture, which I put on top of my title and checked this transparency box so it would only be visible based on the alpha of the layers underneath. I also added a bit of fractal noise to give the title some noise texture. Back in the main comp, I replaced the flat circle moon with an image of a moon I got from Google. I also added some texture to the ground and trees by using fractal noise, which I made sure was very subtle because I didn't want to draw too much attention to it. And I used blending modes, which made most sense for each layer. I also added some bevel highlights to the trees and grass. For the trees, I used the bevel alpha effect Whereas for the grass, I use the layer styles bevel and emboss since it has a few more options available to really dial in the look, which was something I needed for the grass highlights. You can see the bevel highlights alone help so much with creating separation between objects. All right, all right, all right. Now, if this project was not as complex and was only meant for me, then I would leave it as is. But seeing as this will be provided as a template for you guys, then I decided to make it as easily adjustable as possible so every important property that contributes to the look of the scene is available under the controls node. So you can decide if you want to use textures for any of these elements, customize the title, ground and trees textures, change their base colors and brightness, determine the wind speed on both the trees and grass, control the fog and rays, and I even created a bunch of presets for the colorization of the title and background elements. I made sure to rename and organize everything in a way that makes sense. You can also notice that I separated certain properties by using empty color controllers with dash names, which don't have any purpose other than to visually clarify the effects stack. These were all set up by either pick whipping effects to simple slider controllers or by copying and pasting effects with property links. And to do that, I first added the effect on the controls null and then copied the effect with property links and pasted it onto the layers that I wanted. This way I can make adjustments of the effect on the controls null and that affects all the other layers that are linked to that effect. I usually always do this whenever I'm working on bigger projects, be it personal or client work, because even though it might take a bit of time to set everything up, 
If then say I want to make a change or the client requests any changes, then I can do that really efficiently this way. I put in the extra time at the beginning and save myself a lot of time afterwards. All right, so I think we pretty much covered the entire project. So if you're still here, then thanks for watching and being patient all the way through. I hope you enjoyed this new format. I certainly found it a lot more fun compared to the usual tutorial style. Let me know what you think though, and if you have any questions, then feel free to leave a comment down below. Remember to download the project files on my Gumroad page, which again are using the pay what you want system, so you can grab them for free, while still having the option to support the channel if you'd like to. If you don't want to miss out on upcoming videos, then make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.